Oh my god. She's so drunk. Those who don't appreciate life. Hello, and welcome to Cheers to Fears, where we take horror films and make them into drinking games. We're your two hosts, Tucker. And I'm Alex, and today we'll be taking a closer look into 2007's Dead Silence, written and directed by Leigh Whannell and James Wan, the writers and directors from Saw, which is very evident while watching Dead Silence, as a lot of the production style is inspired by Saw. Just a fair warning, there may be spoilers ahead, so if you've not seen Dead Silence and want to, consider watching it first before watching this video. The story starts off when Jamie Ashton comes home to find his wife, Lisa Ashton, dead and disfigured, which occurred after receiving a strange package in the mail containing Billy, the ventriloquist dummy. Having no alibi, Jamie is a prime suspect in murdering his wife. Driven to prove his innocence, he finds a clue in the package they received that leads him to his hometown, Ravensfair. Upon his arrival, he reunites with his ill father, Edward, and his new young bride, Elle, where he begins to dig into the town's bloody past. At Lisa's funeral, Jamie is warned of the curse of Mary Shaw, which then leads him to bury Billy at the cemetery at Raven's Fair. At this point in the film, we start to see things escalate as Jamie soon finds out that he is in for more than he bargained for. The first rule that we have is drink for every death. This means whenever death is seen, implied, or found out later on in the film. The total amount of deaths that we had for this movie was eight, so therefore that was eight drinks. <laughs> so on to the second rule, which is every time somebody screams, cries, or yells. And the reason we have all three is because there is a lot of times where someone is yelling and What's going on? Lisa! And you might interpret it as a scream or vice versa. So we wanted it incorporated all as one. And with that, there was a total of 22 screams, cries, or yells, which equals 22 drinks. The third rule is jump scares, which we add 13 for our count. This rule can really be left up to interpretation, so our interpretation of it is whenever there's a loud sound after silence, <laughs> or whenever something pops up onto the screen suddenly. <laughs> So rule number four is pretty straightforward. It's whenever Mary Shaw is said. Mary Shaw. Mary Shaw. Mary Shaw. Mary Shaw. Which, based on our count, was 23 times in the movie. The fifth rule we had, where there was only four drinks, but we had to include it just because it was so infamously known with the movie. That famous poem that goes, Beware the stare of Mary Shaw. She had no children, only dolls. And if you see her in your dreams, be sure you never ever scream. The sixth rule of the movie is anytime there's a doll shown. This doesn't only include Billy the doll, this includes any other doll that you see. So now is probably a good time to introduce our mercy rule. Because of the scene where there's 101 dolls in the theater, nobody wants to take 101 drinks. So the mercy rule essentially means whenever there's more than five drinks in a scene for one rule, we only take five drinks. We don't take any more. Even with that mercy rule in place, there's still 52 drinks involved for when any doll is shown. The seventh rule is whenever the silence occurs. This is whenever the audio stops abruptly. Or whenever the audio pitches down slowly. For this, we had a grand total of eight drinks. So our eighth rule which is the last, and certainly the least, is when Detective Lipton is shaving. There's only four instances where this happens in the film, but we had to include it for how ridiculous of a character gimmick it is. 
Our total number of drinks for this movie is 134. For a standard sized can and our scale of 30 drinks per can, that comes out to about four and a half beer. So a lot of people might be wondering why we chose to do Dead Silence as our first episode on this channel. Why did we do that? Yeah, I guess mainly it was the first horror movie I've ever seen. So in saying that, it was very sentimental for me. So that, that brings us to how we felt about the movie. And overall, like, I enjoyed the movie when I watched it. And despite some of the criticisms that I had, like, I did enjoy and I had fun watching the movie. Yeah. I know a lot of people really hated this movie, including Le Winnell. He actually <laughs> he actually hated the script for the movie because of how much involvement the production company had. Yeah. And he pretty much disowns the movie because of it. <laughs> but yeah, obviously I'm biased and I like the movie. A lot of the jump scares were kind of cheap. <laughs> I'll say it's, that. It's true. So basically a lot of them were just set up in ways that it's scary, but you just think about it and you're just like, huh. This hotel probably does not get a lot of business, considering there's just a red fluorescent light, <laughs> light blinking every like <laughs> in every room, every two seconds. <laughs> that's so bright that a very thin curtain does not block it. Yeah, <laughs> I immediately thought that too. Like I wouldn't want to sleep in a room where there's a bright ass and not only bright but loud. Yeah, flashing light every it, fucking second. It's not the fact that it's creepy; it's the fact that I could not sleep in that yeah. room because of how annoying it would be. So another thing I want to bring up is in the very final scene, they said uh, Jamie's father was the one to grab the Billy doll and bring it back to his house. I want to point out how nobody has noticed that Edward Hashton has <laughs> been hollowed out yeah. and his girlfriend's just kind of chilling there and nobody ever sees him. She's like, oh yeah, he's just <laughs> fine. Another thing, I thought that the actor could have done a better job of portraying his distress, especially yeah. when he was finding his dead wife with her tongue missing in bed. Yeah. He could have at least been a little more heard about it. He kind of just fell over and then I'm, showed no emotion. To be fair, I'm not, I've never been in that situation before, but I'd imagine I would have screamed and the movie just would have been over. I, I kind of want to talk about Lipton for a second, actually. Okay. So Lipton's character in itself just doesn't make sense. So first of all, I don't think any detective just actively stalks somebody after he's committed a serious crime. And then he's like, hey, this doll means absolutely nothing, and I had never arrested a dummy before. He sees Jamie burying it, and he's like, why are you burying evidence, Jamie? He's like, you said that the doll's basically fucking pointless. <laughs> like, you're yeah. very, very mixed on what your motivations are. You're a terrible cop. <laughs> he is, yeah, definitely a terrible cop. <laughs> and on top of that, every single scene we see him in, a razor is involved in him shaving, which I can't get over how stupid it is. It actually irritates me every time I see it. Yeah. What are your thoughts on Dead Silence compared to other uh, Wenel Wan films like <laughs> Saw or Insidious, for example? Um, Saw, the franchise, should have ended about five movies ago. <laughs> There's one coming up in yeah. May, so that's, that's going to be interesting. That being said, I still enjoy Saw as a franchise oh, yeah. more than Dead Silence. <laughs> yeah, you just kind of watch Saw like it's a soap opera, pretty much. It's yeah. just like last time on Saws of Our Lives. The plot of Saw is not the reason you watch Saw. It's, <laughs> it's simply f to see the traps and how people die. Yeah, yeah. And that's the fun of it. <laughs> it's generally that. <laughs> um, compared to Insidious? Insidious, to me, is... Like, it's in the top five of my favorite horror movies. I, I really liked Insidious. It's it's a little less forced than Dead Silence. The jump scares, and the main reason is because it's a supernatural plane, so therefore you can do things that aren't necessarily in this plane, like a flashing glowing red light. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it looks a little bit no, more natural because it's not supposed to look natural. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I'd say Dead Silence, in terms of those movies, is probably a little bit lower on, yeah. the, on the ladder, but... Still enjoyed it, watching it, aside from the little gripes I have. So I guess we should talk about how drinking through the movie was. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. So the main problem that I had is it was, I feel, well-paced, but a lot of the theater scenes were just absolutely brutal. Yeah, especially when they showed all of the dolls. <laughs> uh, trying to drink all those drinks was a bit of a challenge. Welcome to our first ever Darwin Awards Ceremonies. 
This is where we take two to four of the dumbest characters or the dumbest decisions in the movie and put them up against each other to determine who we crown the winner. Our first nominee is Michael Ashton. And the reason we put him up for a nomination is for Heckling Mary Shaw, which ultimately led to Mary Shaw's curse, which led to his and his entire family's death. Our second Darwin Award nominee is Henry Walker. So the reason he's up for a nomination is for the scene where he goes under the crawl space in the search for Marion, his wife. He would have seen or heard her go underneath the crawl space, so this stupid decision that he made led to his death. Our third and final Darwin Award nomination is Detective Lipton. And the reason we chose to put him up for a nomination is simply because of how stupid he is for shaving in every single scene. And the winner for the Darwin Award is... Henry Walker for going under the floorboards and dying like an aging dog. And with all that being said, we hope you enjoyed our look into dead silence. If you end up playing the game alongside the movie, or if you have any feedback or suggestions, let us know in the comments below. We would love to hear from you. Make sure to like and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss the next week episode where we take a look at Sinister. Thanks for tuning in, and this is us saying cheers, cheers. to fears. fears.